Hello and welcome to the amazing Melbourne. It is the sporting capital of Australia and the 10-pin Premier League final, otherwise known as the decider. Now, the exciting thing about this sport is anything can happen on any given day and that's exactly what's happened in TPL 3. He did win TPL 1, he did win TPL 2, but Jared Langford did not make it through to this round of the Super 8s. What that meant is it left it wide open for anyone to be able to take that title. We have a whole lot of young guns and right rising stars of the sport who are going to be competing today for that title of the winner of TPL3. But that is not all we are crowning today. We are also today crowning the championship winner, our very first TPL champion 2022 in front of this amazing Melbourne crowd. What an exciting day we have ahead of us. Let's get straight into it. Hello and welcome to Keon Park here in Melbourne. Liam Ellison here alongside me is Mike Griffith, the National High Performance Manager. Ripping day here, T TPL3. It's Melbourne, the decider. Double points, Mike. Welcome to the broadcast. How are you this afternoon? Yeah, very good, thanks, Liam. Yeah, great to be here and uh, exciting sort of matches coming up ahead. So looking forward to them. We've certainly got a different field of players that we're dealing with in this one, but uh, a lot of the youngsters and uh, be great to see what we can get. We certainly do. First up, we have the qualifying final, Cameron Stein versus Warren Stewart, as we see them on your screens warming up right now. There was a few sort of surprises, as Cans Candy mentioned in the intro, in terms of how the 32 went yesterday and the 16 this morning, Mike. Yeah, we certainly did. I mean, there there were some common names that people are getting used to uh, seeing in the finals here. And um, this this uh, event, we had Grace Faye, who actually lost round one. Alicia Melton, who also lost in round one in their pool. But both of them actually averaged very well. They averaged 206 and 201, respectively. They just didn't get enough points in the head-to-head -head match play format to get through. And in this round one, we also lost Adam Hayes, and we also lost Jared Lankford, the champion for the last two events. Both of them, had, uh, Jared averaged 223, but finished six in his pool and unfortunately didn't make it through. That's the, the real difference, isn't it, with this format here for TPL. Obviously, it's the sprint version, five frames, but you can have an average like 223 and, and not make it if the wins don't go your way. That is correct, because it's head-to-head -head match play and you can win on a 180 game, but you can lose on a 230 game. So we're in 10 pin bowling, we normally have uh, a it focus on the average and sort of the higher average gets through. This one here is head-to-head -head match play and some win or loss, sudden death. Double points today, as we mentioned. It's got to be some nervy moments for a few athletes. There's a, a lot riding on every single throw. How do you deal with that? Um, well, the, the athletes deal with this on a daily basis, and most of the ones that are here are our best athletes in the country. Um, they know how to deal with it, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. They come back next time rearing and ready to go, and, uh, and, and I know that each of them have come here today with a target in mind to take out the title. There's some rising stars as well on offer in today's Super 8. Who are some of the, the rising stars we should be looking out for? Future of Australian bowling right here. Well, so pretty much um, this this field we've had, well, we've got a good mix. We've actually got three of our NTS youth players and they were part of the team that went it's to Sweden for our this first year. Match up. It is and it looks like we're, we're starting final. up in the match play uh, one matches one in a moment. We'll get back to some of the players in a moment, but Warren I'll pass over Stewart. to you, Liam. Certainly. It's going to be an absolute ripper. Stein and Stewart to start us off here. Stein finished top of pool play. Well placed, the young gun to start things off here at Melbourne, the decider. CPL3 just moments away as he prepares right now to start things off. What would be going through his head right now, Mike? Uh, just how to execute the best shot he can, sort of stepping up there, and he knows what he has to do, and he just has to make it happen. So Cameron Stein begins his approach. It's away. And first is good. Opens it up with a strike here at TPL3. Perfect that, that, start. That would have been exactly what Cameron was after just then. Um, he went out there to get a strike. He executed exactly the way he wanted to and uh, got the result he needed. So can Warren Stewart return fire. Composers. Here's Stewart. 
Looks good out of the hands. And right back at you. There's another strike for Stewart. Flawless start for both athletes. We certainly have the uh, two. We have Warren, who's some, one of our senior bowlers, and he's been around and done it all and back in the late 80s and 90s, and he is a bowler of pure class. So he knows exactly what he's doing. He's been there and done that. Cameron, on the other hand, our, one of our youth players, is just starting his run, and he's certainly showing the signs of being a great athlete. Real opposite end of the spectrum from experience. Here they are today, head-to-head. Stein, two hands that time, and another one goes. Converts on the double. Both athletes have done exactly what they need to do in this sprint format. It's like the 100-metre sprint. They have to come out of the blocks very quick and get strikes from the first ball. They have no time to warm up. They certainly don't. Stewart. Now searching for his second. On the approach, hits the pocket, same result. Great start from both these men here. Certainly is to and fro. They've started off with a double each, double being two strikes in a row. Um, that means that the whatever they score with the first ball, this one here goes into the score of their first frame, making up their first frame total. We'll see if Cameron Stein can do just that. Again, ops for the two hands. Make it three. There's the turkey. And we're potentially going for a perfect game in the five-frame format, which is 150 pins, only being five frames. They score 30 frames or maximum 30 frame, uh, pins per frame, and that makes up the 150 game. And all, th all two of them are on for a three a perfect game. It's in play for both these bowlers. Stewart sets himself. On the approach, looks good again, but it leaves. Oh, nearly nudged it over. The 10 stands. How close was that? That could have gone either way. If that pin had have fallen late, it would have been counted as a strike. And so we were just watching to see what had happened. Leaves him a cold 10 pin. Now, 10 pins are the corner pins. They're something that um, our bowlers do leave quite a bit but they're expected to pick them up. So one remains. Should be rudimentary for a man of his experience. Red and butter shot for that, yeah. yeah. Warren's done so many of those, he'd know exactly how to pick them up. Has keeps, the spare. Keeps the frame clean, yeah. Keeps the frame nice and clean, so uh, he's, he's closed, but Cameron's got the upper hand at the moment. Can he take advantage of this early ascendancy? Cameron Stein, the youngster. Same result. Four bagger. What a start from this young man. Cameron's certainly shown what he's made of, and that's pure class. It just uh, up there, four strikes out of four shots. He's shown that he's not intimidated by Warren Stewart in any way. Getting to the pointy end of this matchup now. Warren Stewart. His approach on the roll. Needs a strike. Gets it. Another one for Stewart. And Warren certainly gives himself every chance of actually being in this match. But Cameron's stepping up onto the approach, potentially bowling a perfect 150 game here if he can get the three strikes that he needs. What a start it would be to TPL3. Prepares the ball. Looking for the fifth running. Stein. Looks good, looks very good. Make that five, perfect game, still in play. First one in there, so he's done that one, he's got two more to go. Bowling a very good shot, very composed. I think he can do this. Very relaxed and composed. In control at the moment, the youngster. 
It also makes it very hard for Warren to win from this point, but uh, it's not closed yet. Can he capitalise? Stein, the roll, and this time the 10 stands again. It's a cold 10 pin, but by doing this, he's um, pretty much made it very tough for Warren, and um, yeah, he just needs to make this spare to close out a very clean game. Looking for that clean sheet with the spare opportunity. Two very close 10 pins, both players. Stein on target, hits the gutter. So misses on the spare, but a great opening game from Cameron Stein. Five frames, five strikes. Stewart looking to make one final run. Clean sheet so far. Comes up again. The 10 stands. It's been a little bit of a pattern so far in this game. Bit, yes. You can just see that uh, he wasn't quite comfortable with that shot when he executed it. Um, so he needs to make this spare, and which he'll probably do quite easily. But uh, it makes the game sort of decided. So looking for the 10. Stewart, easy as you like. And with that spare, he actually has one more shot to go just to finish out the fifth frame with a possible 10 count for a strike. Warren Stewart. One more roll. The veteran. And again, it's... Nine go down. So that does it. Cameron Stein comes away with the victory here in the qualifying final. He'll advance through to the prelim. A very good, solid performance by Cameron Stein there, just showing uh, the pedigree that he's got and the quality he's got. He, as I was just going to say, sort of before the start of the match, uh, Cameron is one of our uh, bronze medalists from the, the World Championship team, the, the youth team that went to Sweden early this year. It's a magnificent achievement for sure. We've got Candy Hertz with Cameron right now. Cam, congratulations. First time in the Super 8 and now straight through to the preliminary final. How excited are you? Oh, very excited. I was very nervous uh, for the whole game pretty much. Um, so I was just basically managing the, whole, the nerves the whole time. We talked about the nerves pre-game as well. How are you going to calm them moving into the preliminary? Um, I was going to try and take the pressure off myself. So I'm trying to get in my own head and just kind of enjoy the experience that it is. Well, I hope you keep enjoying. Congratulations once again, Cam. Thank you, Candy. Great to hear from Cameron Stein there. Just trying to enjoy the moment, not get too stuck in his head. Yes. And just one thing to note that Warren isn't out of this. He's actually got that second chance. So Warren just moves on to the uh, winner of the match three and uh, match coming up later on. So Warren will see him on the lanes a little bit later on. Cameron moves on into the next stage. The bonus of being one of the top four seeded athletes here this afternoon in the Super 8. We'll see Stuart once again as a second matchup not far away now as well, Mike. This is going to be a ripper. Yes, it's certainly going to be. Um, we've got Sam Cooley. Yeah. We've got the highlights yeah. on your screen right now as well from the previous game. Really high quality stuff. And it was five strikes from Cameron Stein that got the job done. But, of course, yes, it is Sam Cooley and Jamie Robinson coming up in just a moment, Mike. Yep. Sam being the superstar that he is, our, uh, one of our professional bowlers that is overseas and doing very well. Um, coming up against another uh, of our young bowlers from our youth team from the World Championships also, Jamie Robinson. So it'll be interesting to see how Jamie steps up against Sam, who's um, probably had a lot more experience and a uh, lot more... Um, results out there than what Jamie has had so far. It's been a couple of these matchups, hasn't there? The veterans versus uh, the rookies, if you like, or the, the youngsters. Yeah, no, but it's also very good. We've got a very good...
So we'll be here in just a moment with the matchup. Okay. Welcome back to Melbourne, Keon Park here, and of course, beautiful, the National Gallery of Victoria, the Arts Precinct there, Mike, there's plenty to do in the city of Melbourne. If you're in town over the next coming months as summer approaches, you've got the National Gallery of Victoria, some fantastic, of course, the Hyde Museum of Modern Art as well, not too far from here. Plenty, of, plenty to do in the city of Melbourne. It certainly is. Uh, yeah, plenty of great places to see. Come down to Melbourne. It's a great place to be, even if you um, live in Melbourne, coming down and seeing some of the sites, and uh, it's a great place to be. Did you know that the National Gallery of Victoria is the oldest and most visited gallery in Australia? Three million visitors a year, Mike. I didn't know that, Liam. It's a lot of I people. I know that now. Fantastic. Absolutely. We're not far away from Sam Cooley and Jamie Robinson here at Keon Park. It was a fantastic opening game between Stein and Stewart. What do we expect here from well, this Sam, game? Well, Sam Cooley's had a great year. He's actually was our gold medalist at the World Games in uh, Birmingham earlier this year, and so he brought back a, a singles gold medal for us. Jamie Robinson's come with his own medalist, um, being a bronze medalist from our team's our World Championship youth team, and winning the team's event was absolutely awesome for Australia, because it shows the strength of our players and having four players can step up there against the rest in the world and come back with a bronze medal. So we've got um, two bowlers here of different levels of experience, but um, we're going to have a great match. And of course, this has real ramifications, not only for the winner of TPL 3, but the 10-pin Premier League champion as well. Of course, the tournament winner from all three, Sam Cooley, is in the running, Mike. Yes, so well, and, well and truly. Yes. I mean, if Sam does well here in this tournament and wins the event, by all means, he can step up and take take the event, uh, take the series over Jared. Yeah, Jared Langford currently the leader after, of course, winning TPL 1 and 2. Yes. So, double points as we know, we spoke about it off the top, but if Sam was to win today, he would be right there well, in the mix. Truly, yes. yes. And I think, I think the formula is they do actually have to win the event, so if yep. they come through and win the event, we've actually got a few people that are still in the running and can come up and take the double points and take the overall title. Talk us through some of those athletes still in contention, Mike. I believe there's four of them if you exclude Jared, making yeah. it five. Well, apparently, well, even Jamie's got a chance. Jamie, uh, Jamie Robinson, we've got Vic Martin, who's coming up in one of our later matches, and we've also got Bernie Grisso Jr., who are all in the running. If they were to come through and have a clean run, win the event, and get the double points, they could certainly make a big difference at the top of the table there. That said, too, I mean, Jared's still got a chance he could hold his position. If something else happens and one of these players or these players don't make it all the way through, he can certainly still be up there and take out the title. So although he's been knocked out, Jared is still in the running, um, at the leading the table, and can certainly take out the overall title. Absolutely. Sitting not far from us. I'm sure we'll hear from him throughout the broadcast yes. as well with Kenny Hurts. It'd be great to get his thoughts. As he watches on, would you just be sort of enjoying the, the atmosphere or a little bit nervous as well, I would have thought? I, I think a little bit of both there, Liam. Yeah, um, you certainly b would be watching the, the great bowling out there. I, I suppose, in, as any bowler would, I, I know that he'd be wanting to be out there. It is time now he certainly for would be. So not far away Cooley now, the qualifying Jamie final Robinson, between Cooley and Robinson, of course. The loser does have a double chance, importantly. Cooley, the top-seeded athlete in his pool. Number one seed. Yes, and so, as, as with the previous match, the loser of this is not out. They go through to a second-chance round. Sam Cooley. Approaches the opening frame. Cooley looks very good. There's the first strike for Cooley. Exactly what he was out to do. Perfect, perfect ball. 
star of Australian 10 pin bowling for a number of years now, was Cooley. Certainly is. And as Jamie steps up here, he'll be thinking the same thing. He knows what he needs to do. Just get up there and execute the best shot he can. So the first roll of the Super 8 for Robertson. Finds the pocket. And another strike. Robinson returns fire. As with the previous game, um, we have both bowlers coming out of the block, getting a strike on their first ball. And being in the five-frame format, that's what they need to do. It's like a sprint. You need to be quick out of the blocks. Takes the pressure off early when you open like that. With, with very few frames, I mean, only having five frames, you don't have a chance to warm up into the game. You need to be striking from ball one and continue from there. Can Robinson continue the momentum? There's the roll, and it places perfectly. Maybe, so, maybe not the perfect ball that he was after there. I mean, he, he certainly looked at it weirdly when it came off the hand, but it did carry. A little bit of a late 10 pin to fall, but um, he, he got the result he needed. So the double to open for Robinson. Cooley hoping for the same. Cooley and the 10 stands. Hoping for the spare. Yeah, yeah, exactly the same as in the previous game with our 10 pins. Good ball, enters the pocket, but just leaves that corner pin, or what we call the 10 pin. That one just came in a little bit light on the head pin, a little bit to the right-hand side of where he probably needed to be. But this should be bread and butter shot once again for Sam Cooley. He's picked up so many of these, and they don't like to leave them. Cooley picks out the 10. So there's the spare for Cooley. Very Robinson, the early lead. Yeah, so we've got uh, Jamie going in to the third shot with a double and uh, Sam with a strike and a spare. So Sam's a little bit behind the eight ball. He's going to have to strike from this point on, whereas Jamie's got the upper hand. See if he can bounce back here. Cooley. the TPL Championship in play. Comes back late and finds the strike. Cheers from the pit. Yes, yeah, Sam's so, so um, cool there. He just knows exactly what he needed to do. Came back, didn't get flustered by the nine spare, and knew he had to get a strike there to have a chance to stay in the game. It's all down to Jamie now. Great start from this young man. Jamie Robinson. Bowls them over. And that's a turkey for Robinson. If you're watching Jamie in his confidence delivering that ball, once again, he wasn't 100% sure of that one. Something's not going quite right for him. But one, he, he did carry what he needed to carry and got the turkey. That gives him 30 pins in the first frame. And also makes it much harder for Sam to come through. Always nice when you're still getting the results despite that, Mike. Definitely. Looking for four. Robinson. And there's four. This man is on fire here, at much, least in the results column. A much cleaner shot by Jamie then, so it was a uh, yeah, very good shot. Gives him the first four strikes. I think that was the same as what Cameron, our other youngster, did in the previous game, starting off with the front four. Yes. So um, at the moment he's sitting in 60 pins in the second frame with a bonus. Very, Sam stepping up now. Very well placed is Robinson. Cooley far from out of it. Looks good out of the hand. Looks very good. Skittles another strike for, school, for Cooley. Absolute perfection there. Very great shot by Sam. Cool, calm, collected knows exactly what he's doing there. Extremely composed. Now with the double, he, he has got a double going into the final fifth frame. He's going to have to take all three strikes here 
to give himself with any chance and then he's got to hope on Jamie on missing something in the next frame. Got to do his part to put the pressure on. Sam Cooley, the star of the Super 8 so far. There's the first. So he opens the fifth frame with a strike. Can he make it two more, Mike? He certainly put, well, did everything you needed to, and he's been bowling some great shots there. And even, even that 10-pin, as I said, was only just slightly lighter the pocket. But he's done every other shot right in there, giving it every chance. Hoping for more of the same. The clean sheet so far. Sam Cooley down the lane and leaves four out there. And that's not what he needed to, do, uh, to see. That's what we call a split. Um, we've got the three on the left and the one on the right, meaning the ball goes in between all of those pins without touching all of them. Um, he needs to go across or through the left-hand side and flick that front pin across onto the 10 pin. Can he put it where it needs to be? And misses on the 10. So it's 9 for Cooley. That'll finish his outing. Interesting. So that's going to... Well, just depending on... Jamie's got to stay clean and just finish off this game. He's going into this frame with uh, leading off four strikes. Everything he scores with the first ball will count to his third frame. As a four-bagger so far, Robinson. And he'll have to bowl again. Oh, nearly nudged over the 10. Once again, very close to that 10 from falling. We had to wait until all the pins had stopped moving to see exactly what had happened. 10 pin here for him to spare. It's been a great opening matchup from this young man. Robinson picks it out. There's the spare. So he gets the job done with one ball to come. And he has the game won already, so uh, he knows he's just got to get up there and bowl a shot just to finish up the game. Wants the perfect finish to this qualifying final. Robinson. There's the strike. Great opening from this youngster. And we have two of the rising stars through to the prelim, Mike. So once, once again, we have the youngster or the youth player coming up through and getting get, getting into the next round. Sam's not out of it. He goes into the next uh, the losers round coming up shortly after games three and four will determine who Sam will be playing. So Sam has that second chance, as was Warren Stewart. And, um, yeah, just great to see Jamie finish with a lovely 129 game over five frames, uh, which was an awesome, awesome score for Jamie. Very clean game. Possibly not the best of the strikes that he was getting, and um, he would have would have preferred to have executed slightly better shots. But it looks like we're going into the interview right now. Very impressive from Jamie Robertson. Here's Candy Hertz with him right now. Jamie, congratulations. First time in the Super 8, straight through to the prelim. Now, I wanted to ask you if you're excited, but I feel like you have a look of surprise on your face. Am I right? Oh, a little bit, yeah. Um, obviously, it's very exciting. Um, I didn't know what to expect um, going into the game. So, yeah, a little bit, uh, a little bit excited, a little bit surprised, yeah. And are you happy with how you actually approached it or what would you change going into the preliminaries? Um, overall, I'm quite happy with it. Um, there's a few things I want to change um, for the next game, but I don't think about it a little bit. Have a good thing, Jamie. You've got a little bit of time now, a little bit, bit of a rest, of course, going into the preliminaries. Congratulations once again to Jamie. Thank you, Candy. Great to hear from Jamie Robertson there. Still a few things to work on as we have the elimination finals up in just a moment after this quick ad break. We'll be back very, very shortly here at TPL3, Melbourne, the decider.
Back to Melbourne here at Keon Park, and of course, Melbourne has long been synonymous for fashion and style. If you're in town, plenty to look at, especially in the CBD when it comes to fashion. Some of the biggest international brands, designer luxury labels, and high street fashion chains. Plenty to do and see if you're in the city of Melbourne, as we are today here at Keon Park for TPL3, Melbourne the decider. And the elimination finals are just moments away. Jaden Panella and Bernie Grusso Jr to get us back underway in just a moment, Mike. Should be a good one. S certainly should be a very good one. Jaden's had a great tournament, uh, this one here. He came into round two and he actually shot a three, a perfect 300 game in that round. And that was in addition to, I think he had a 278 in the same round as well. So he's had a couple of really good matches there. And he's a 25-year-old. He's uh, sort of one of our younger players, um, but he's, uh, he's out of the youth and into the adult ranks and so forth. He's been around and done quite a few things, but he's still one of our young up-and-coming stars, I suppose, of the future. When we talk about Bernie Grusso, he's another member of our NTS youth squad that actually went over for Team Australia to Sweden and was one of our bronze medalists that came back with a, uh, from the World Championship. So we, we had three of our boys that were bowling in the World Championship in Sweden competing here today in the top eight. Some more of the rising star flavour here today at Keon Park, of course. Cameron Stein, Jamie Robinson have gone through to the preliminary finals. One of these young men here will end their afternoon with a loss here, and the other will go through to play either Cooley or Stewart. Yes, we are certainly moving into the elimination phase of this, and um, so either Jaden or Bernie will um, make it through to the next stage and take on one of our losers from match one or match two, and the loser, unfortunately, ends his run here. Elimination time here at TPL3. Lane's looking slick, as always. Yes, certainly is. And as, as we say, each of them, they just have their couple of shots of practice. They're working out sort of where the ball is reacting, what they need to do with their particular shot going into this. But they're all composed. They know exactly what they need to do. They've done this before. They're just stepping up there to execute the best shot they possibly can. How important are these warm-ups for those who aren't aware? Just before you get that first frame, of course, you know, only five frames as we know. Just like um, in any sport, like a golfer taking their practice swings before they play the shot, it's just loosening up the arm and the bodies to execute the shot they need. But it's also getting a bit of a read of the lanes. There is the lane condition out there. There is the oil on the lanes. And sometimes that can play slightly different, left lane to right lane, and um, can also... And it's time now for the first of our elimination finals. It's yeah, Jay so Vanilla we, we certainly, um, yeah, they do just need to test out what's happening out there on the lanes. A bit like checking out the wind, checking when you're playing a golf shot and so forth. And um, we're ready to go. Jane Panella will have... The first roll here of the elimination final had quite the TPL3 so far here at Keon Park. Can he continue that trend? Panella shows some power, swings back and demolishes the temp. There's the strike. They certainly like the strikes here today, uh, Liam, and, and uh, it started off with a strike just like every other person has so far. Been let's see if Booney can do the same. Yeah, it's been world-class bowling. As you'd expect here at TPL3. Bernie Grusso Jr. Sets himself. Grusso, two hands. And there's one more remaining for him to collect for the spare. How that seven pin did not fall, it just was amazing. It looked like it was in there, pins were flying everywhere, and just this one pin stands at the end. Just like a ten pin, they're fairly easy for the bowlers to pick up. Looking to complete the frame. Down goes the seven. <laughs> Bowling with confidence, this young man. But Penella with the early ascendancy. That was Bernie's way of saying it was always there, the seven pin. It may have looked a bit dicey, but he always had it covered. So he'll roll again. On the approach. 
Russo Jr. There's the strike. Loved at the moment it left his hands. We're seeing a bit of animation out there, which uh, Bernie, you could see he was calling his ball up, calling it, telling it to hook. And it did carry 10. Great showmanship from Russo Jr. Penella looking for the double. And he won't get it. So the nine remains up by the looks. That one there, uh, Jaden would have missed his target or not executed the shot properly. You could see that it came in far too high on the head pin, more closer or, or even nearly crossing over to the Brooklyn, which is the left-hand side. But it's left him just the one pin to spare, the six pin, which is the one that's beside the ten. And picture perfect. So... It's been a symmetrical start here in the elimination final, at least in the score column. You are correct there, Liam. Yeah, they're both on 20 pins. A strike spare and a spare strike. Certainly open for either of them to come forward. Bernie would probably have the slight advantage because he's got the strike coming into the next shot. Penella. There's the roll. And again, the 10 cents. That friendly little 10 pin has been standing up a little bit in this uh, TV pair today. It and has. Once again, it stands from a decent shot, but one, and we would expect the players to pick this up and make it a nine spare. However, it's not a strike, and it leaves the door a little bit more open for Bernie to come in with a double. Got to take care of business here. Penella searching for the spare and just missing, fading late off the gutter. So it's an open frame on the third for Penella. Unfortunately, missing single pins is not very much accepted by bowlers here, and uh, yeah, he would be feeling it there, knowing that he's missed an easy 10 pin, and it also makes it very hard to come back in a five frame game. Tough break. Can Grusso Jr. take advantage? There it is. We'll have one more opportunity coming up as the 10 wobbles. I don't think Bernie particularly liked that. You saw him stomp his foot at the end of it. Something didn't go quite right. And you could see that there was nearly a split standing. There was another pin standing in the middle of the lane, but that fell, leaving him just a 10 pin to spare. Looking to make light work of this. Russo Jr. takes out the final pin and that'll put him ahead of Penella. And Bernie just showing Jaden how to pick up the temp in there and just saying that's how you do it, Jaden. And that gives him a, a more of an advantage. Spare versus an open going into the fourth frame. Now with the lead. Can he add to it? Bit of oomph in that one. And he takes him out. He's pumped Bernie Grusso Jr. Great showing. And that was exactly what Bernie needed. And it brings him into 60 pins in the third frame with a strike in the fourth, leading into the crucial fifth frame. Jaden stepping up after a nine miss. He's going to have to get a strike for every shot from now on and judge on Bernie missing something in the fifth frame. He's got it all in front of him now. Has to put the pressure on his opponent and does just that with a strike on the fourth. That certainly gives himself every chance if there is a chance. So he's got the strike. He just now, now needs to finish off the fifth frame with three good strikes and make Bernie earn his pins. That's the equation for Penella. The four bagger to finish. was electric earlier in TPL3. Penella 
Make it two. So he'll go again in the fifth frame. Solid as solid could be. That was exactly what he needed to do. Went out and did it. Shows the class, Jaden Penella. Bouncing back from the nine in the third frame. Pointy end of this elimination final here at Keon Park. Pinella. It's come very wide and leaves two standing. Okay, those two being one in front of the other, we call that a sleeper. And that um, makes it there relatively easy to pick up, but they are more difficult than just single pins. You've got the two pins standing, you've got to drive through the front one and into the rear. Or come in from an angle and pick up two. You can't just, uh, often you'll see a deflection. Pops to find easily done. Straight through them, the sleeper goes and converts on the spare to finish. 96 is the final score for Panella. Okay, and Bernie's on 60 in the third frame with a strike in the fourth. Knowing that, if he doubles, he can get extra bonus pins in the fourth frame. Needs to finish the job. Caruso Jr. He's been an excitement machine so far. There's another strike in the fifth. That strike there makes it a double uh, in the fourth, going in with an extra ball being counting, uh, counted onto the score. That pretty much takes a win. Knowing that Jaden will be eliminated after this game and Bernie will be proceeding. Looking at finish and style. To move on to the second round. Looks very solid out of the hand. Another one goes. Geez, bowling with some confidence here, Mike. Yeah, we can't say that that was exactly uh, what he wanted to do. Uh, it was a strike. It carried, but yeah, Bernie would certainly like to forget that shot and go out there and make this one perfect. To finish the match up the way he would like. The semi-final awaits Bernie Grusso Jr. And this time, again, two stand. What a matchup from Bernie Grusso Jr., who will advance here at CPL3 Melbourne. Very solid game there by Bernie. He uh, had two nine spares and eight at the end with strikes in between. Very clean, very solid game of 118. Uh, Jaden's 96, unfortunately, with the one pin or the single pin miss. We've got Candy Hertz with Bernie right now. Bernie, congratulations. That was an exceptional effort by you. Congratulations still to Jaden. He had an amazing start to today. He did have a perfect score earlier, but this game was over to you. How great is it to be performing at this level with these sorts of athletes? No, this is, this is great. Like, this is exactly what, uh, what you strive for, what you uh, work for. So this is, this is a good way to, to go out. An amazing emotion from you as well out there. It was fun to ride it with you. It was fun to have the crowd behind you as well. Are you enjoying this format with the crowd here? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, especially when you have your family behind you. Not genetic, but, like, you know, it's always, it's always good. <laughs> hey, we can pick our family. Congratulations once again. Excited to watch you take it through to the next round. Thank you very much. Congratulations to Bernie. Great to hear from Bernie Grusso Jr. there. He's been the showman so far here at TPL3, Mike. We'll be back just a moment for the second elimination final here at Keon Park. Stick with us. Back shortly.
Welcome back to Melbourne, Keon Park for TPL3 here in beautiful Melbourne. Of course, it has many hidden laneways scattered throughout the city centre and its surrounding neighbourhoods. Check out beautiful Hosier Lane. If you go there, you've got to get a photo in front of some of the beautiful artwork there, don't you, Mike? It's it's a lovely lane. I've, I've been there a few times, and just the artwork, it's amazing. You just, it's changing all the time. So just to walk down there and get your photos, it's a great place to be. It's an absolute rite of passage when you visit Melbourne, that's for sure. Here we are again, moments away from the elimination final here. Blake Walsh and Beck Martin, Mike. This is going to be a ripper. Loser goes home. We certainly do. We have um, Mr. Personality, Blake Walsh, coming up here. He's one of our junior bowlers, and he's such a star at the moment. He's just winning everything um, left, right, and centre. He couldn't make it to the last TPL event because he was over in New Zealand bowling with Team Australia, the junior Team Australia in the Trans-Tasman Cup. And so he's here today to show us his worth. And he's up against Beck Martin, who Beck Martin's one of our Team Australia, who will be competing in the IBF World Cup for Team Australia up in Sunshine Coast in a couple of weeks' time. What? So Beck's had a wonderful year. She's been our number one ranked um, female player um, on the rankings. And so she's coming into this with a lot of form. What an opportunity for her to represent Australia at the World Cup on home soil. And you mentioned number one ranked as well. I mean, there's plenty of stars you know, Beck Whiting as well, who was eliminated earlier in this tournament. Yes. It's, a, it's a serious feat to be ranked at the pinnacle there. No, you're certainly right there. I mean, we've got so many great athletes, and we've got a great team of men and women, um, Team Australia, who will be up there on the Gold Coast, uh, Sunshine Coast, sorry, um, competing for Team Australia. And um, they'll, be, they'll be flying flag and, and um, bowling for Australia very shortly. But it's great to see that most of those players are actually doing so well in these TPL events as well. And, of course, Blake Walsh, he just looks composed beyond his years, don't you think? 17-year-old, he's, he's certainly got a lot more maturity than uh, his age d dictates. Um, but he certainly, he's, he's a junior bowler, but he's been bowling in um, all of our youth and adult events and doing quite well across the field this year. So he's had a wonderful year, and um, he's certainly looking at... Uh, doing bigger and better things in the future. He is also our first reserve uh, for t Team Australia for the Sunshine Coast and the World Cup. So being a junior bowler and being our first reserve player for a, an Australian Open team is just amazing at the age he is. What an opportunity. I mean, look, if he's not to compete, sure, but to be around those athletes to see how they prepare, how they go about things, that's awesome. got to be invaluable. Yeah, just being part of it, it's just what Blake is, has wanted to do, and he's been picked. He's going to be there, needed if he'll be there if needed, but uh, pretty much let's see how he performs here today. Here we go, elimination final. Walsh will start us off with the first roll. Final game of the first round of the Super 8, TPL3. Blake Walsh approaching on his first bowl. She is from the pit, and there is the strike. Big support for him here today. Slight difference here. You can see just the personality coming out and sort of going back and playing to the crowd. So I can gather that he'll be doing that most of the match and uh, coming back and giving us a bit of entertainment as we go. Gotta love it. There's a youthful feel here to this one. Here's Beck Martin. Star of Australian bowling. Martin. Composure. First rolls, first strike. I think we've had perfection in the first ball of every every match we've had here today in the step ladder in the TV finals, which is great to see. We have everyone getting things underway straight away here in the sprint format of Super 8. Martin to roll again. To make it a double. Looks good out of the hand, and it will be a double. Bit of a soft ball in 10 pin there. That was the last pin to go down, but it was a very clean shot. Entered the pocket and was always going to be a strike. And plenty of support for both athletes here today at Keon Park. Great to see a lively support here.
Der Walsh. True rising star of the sport. Walsh, some power. Skittles him. Ten go down. And our young man from Ballina in New South Wales, and he comes from there. It certainly shows the, uh, the excitement of getting his second strike. Great to see him having fun with it here on the big stage of the 10-pin Premier League. Composes and will go again. Steely look from Blake Walsh. And one remains. We'll have to line it up and get the spare. Yeah, so decent decent shot. Not quite 10. He'll be working out just picking this four pin up. Should be a straightforward action. Walsh looking to close the frame. Picks it out. Flawless. There's the spare for Walsh. Did what he needed to do. Okay, two strikes in the spare. He's sitting at 49 in the second frame. And Beck's coming into her third frame with two strikes. Chance to gain some ascendancy here at the midway point of this matchup. Martin. Strolls in. There's the late push for the strike. Okay, she looked a little tentative there, not sure whether the ball was going to carry, but she gets her third strike, makes her a 30 in the first frame, and got one more shot to go in. So she's got the advantage over Walt Blake at the moment. Can she make it a four bagger? The World Cup just weeks away. Beck Martin. Looking for four. One will remain. And this time Beck leaves that cold 10 pin. That lovely friendly pin that keeps popping up uh, through our finals here today. Once again, it should be an easy spare for most of the bowlers of this calibre to pick up. It has been the pattern, Mike. Certainly has. She knows what she has to do, and I'm sure she's she's uh, confident she'll pick this up. So one to go. The crowd knew Easily it. Going. Beck knew it. There's the spare. So Blake's stepping up. He's He's got the spare. He's coming in off a spare, but he needs to get a strike here to get the advantage back from Beck. What a play out. Two frames remaining here in the elimination final for Walsh. Looks of concentration. Loved it. Walsh gets it. And Blake did exactly what he needed to do there. Getting a strike after the spear gives him every chance. Now he's at the end of the fourth frame. He's actually got the slight advantage over Beck at the moment because he's got a strike and she's got the spear. If he can double up or get a turkey, he'll take back those pins he lost in the early frame. Look just a touch tentative after that roll. Yeah, just a little bit, but ten, 10 pins behind going into this. He's got a strike. All he needs to do is get another strike here so to give him a chance of uh, yeah, carrying on and making up those 10 pins. So here he goes. In the fifth frame, Blake Walsh. Everyone in the pit watching on behind this young man. And it just rolls over the seven. Needed some encouragement, but it is a strike. Very late falling seven pin there, but he would take every part of that seven pin, I'm sure, that fell. That gives him that um, slight advantage now. He's got a double. The next ball counts also into the fourth frame. Huge result for Walsh. 
Now the opportunity to add to that scorecard. Walsh goes again. Big smile and two thumbs up for Blake Walsh. That was exactly what Blake needed and that brings him back to 99 pins in the fourth frame with a double in the fifth. Um, Beck now must strike on the first ball of her fifth frame. Chance to finish in style and put the pressure on. Blake Walsh. Composure beyond his years. That's a turkey to finish. The four bagger through to the fourth frame. And what a game from this young man. A great performance by Blake Walsh, youngster, but 129 pins. It was only the one nine spare in that game that wasn't a perfect strike. And so he's done everything he can do. That It's all in the hands. Beck can actually punch out here for a tie. So we'll uh, see how things go. She needs a strike with the first ball. Nothing else to do. Beck Martin. That's the equation from Mike. Needs the perfect roll. And leaves some standing. Unfortunately, that, uh, yeah, that finishes the game, uh, or the chance of the game for Beck. Um, she needed a strike. She needed to equal what Blake had done in the, uh, for, in the final frame in order to have any chance of tying the match. So she'll look to finish things off. Martin. There's the spare. Nice spare there. It was a, it was a bit of a bucket, but a fairly easy spare for Beck there. And I'm sure she's going to go out here and try and get the strike just to finish up her game, knowing that there's nothing she can do to win this game at this point. Certainly. The professional until the end. Beck Martin on the approach. Looking for the perfect finish, and she does. Yep. She did exactly what I thought she would do going out there, the person of her calibre that she is, ending up with 115 to Blake's 129. Just sort of a, a, a very respectable score, fully closed game. She didn't leave any pins open. Just a little bit short. Blake did a few more strikes than what she did. So Blake Walsh, the 17-year-old, prevails by 14 pins. And we've got Candy Hurst with Blake right now. Blake might be the youngest in this league, but by far with the biggest fan club for sure. How do you stay focused with so much going on in here today? Uh, just, you know, give it a good old thumbs up. you gotta, you got to enjoy your time on TPL. So, yeah, very thankful for the opportunity, yeah. And what an opportunity as well to be playing against someone of the calibre of Beck. What was that like today? Yeah, um, I've been a big fan of Beck's for like, well, as long as I've known her. I've only been around for 16 years, but the 16 <laughs> years that I have been around, Beck's definitely been one of the women that I look up to. And yeah, she's a phenomenal bowler and I'm very pleased that I managed to come away with a win today. So yeah. One more time, congratulations. Double thumbs up for you. <laughs> See you in the next round. Got to love Blake Walsh and the way he goes about it. Double thumbs up. What a performance. He's through to the second round, and that does complete the first round of action here at TPL3. Stick around with just a couple of minutes away from the semifinals here at Keon Park. TPL1 and TPL2, Jared Langford didn't make it through to the Super 8s this time. It's a bit of a different group, a bit of a rising star, young gun group. What do you think of this Super 8? Uh, the Super 8, as you can see, uh, amazing talent all the way through TPL. And it's shown in this group of eight. 
a lot of juniors, youth, nothing that you can't show on television. Now, uh, something that you can't win today is TPL3, but you can still be our winner, potentially, of the whole TPL Championship. Who do you think is your biggest threat out there right now? Well, everyone that's still remaining, Sam is always a big threat. He's a pro, knows what he's got to do. Jamie, Bernie, they're always in with a shot. Five frames, one mistake, doesn't take much. Now, of course, you were involved in our other two TPLs. How great is the crowd here in Melbourne? Are you enjoying it? Crowd... It's always amazing, uh, but this one has been absolutely electric so far and I hope to see it continue. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jared Langford. Could still be our championship winner today. Who knows how it's going to play out. Great to hear from Jared Langford there with Candy Hertz watching on today. In the lead at the moment for the TPL Championship. Looks pretty composed, doesn't he, Mike? He certainly does, yeah. I mean, uh, it's... it's uh it's hard to say sort of what's going to come up in the next couple of matches and uh, so forth and what's going to peter out. But, yeah, it's, it's anyone's game, anyone's title at the moment. We've had some great performances once again from our young bowlers. Uh, I think Jared touched on that too, that uh, it's good to see such good, strong youth coming out there and putting it up against our more um, experienced senior and, and experienced bowlers. So, yeah. It is. That was really the story of the first round. I mean, Cameron Stein winning the first qualifying final, Jamie Robinson the second, and it was Bernie Garusso Jr. and finally Blake Walsh who won the elimination final. We on a break? Do not believe so. So, oh, yeah. sweet. Talk us through some of that first round as well, Mike. Of course, it was Stein and Robinson in the prelims. What stood out to you the most from that first round? Well, pretty much just um, just to see the quality of the bowling that we've got out there. We've certainly got uh, we've certainly got some talented young players out there, which is great to see. And I mean, the way they stand up on the lanes under TV cameras um, and execute their shots the way they do, it's just very pleasing to see because it's not every day that our young players or any players get a chance to step up on the TV pair and sort of have so much crowd and everything watching. So the nerves the nerves probably are the ones that get into our younger players more than what our uh, senior or more experienced players are because they've had more experience of dealing with it, I suppose. Um, but getting up there and sort of the pressure and, and being able to remain calm, execute the shot. Well, it is a thrill, that's for sure, for some of these athletes to be here on the broadcast today. And it's equally a thrill to have with us in the booth for the next couple of games, the great Jason Belmonte. Jason, welcome. G'day, boys. How are you? What a start. What a start to the TPL today. It's, uh, it's been high scoring. It's been uh, bloody awesome to watch. It, it has been fantastic, Jason, yes. I'd much rather be bowling, though, <laughs> just tell you guys right now. But... Uh, it's, uh, you've mentioned it a few times, and, and I can hear it pretty much all through the crowd, that it's just a really, really good group of uh, athletes today that are competing. We've got uh, all the way from, uh, you know, the old boy in, in Big Woz, uh, all the way through to the youngest competitor in the TPL. So it's, um, it is a great uh, bunch of bowlers. Of course, uh We'll touch on it just quickly before we move on to the next game. It's, but it didn't quite go your way uh, this no, morning, No, don't Jason. remind me. <laughs> don't remind me. No, it was not a good day today. Uh, I had a great day yesterday and felt uh, felt pretty confident walking in this morning. Uh, and then I laced the shoes up, uh, threw my first couple of uh, balls down the lane, and it was, uh, yeah, mate, she was, a little, she was a little rusty. She felt a little off. So in its format with the head-to-head -head wins too you catch uh, you catch an opponent that you know just has a really good reaction and you're trying to fight to get your reaction it's hard to get those uh those w's so um onwards and upwards uh i get to now watch these guys bowl on the tv pair and and be a little jealous and then it'll make me work a little harder when i go back home how have you seen the first year of the 10 pin premier league Mate, it's look. Considering this is our first season, um, you know what a what a, a brilliant addition to Australian bowling. It's given uh, a lot of players an opportunity to compete under the lights. It's it's given uh, a lot of the Australian 
bowling fans an opportunity to see a, a wide range of players, and including professional bowlers like Sam and myself. Um, so I'm just absolutely thrilled to be a part of it and can't wait to see what Season 2 brings. Absolutely, of course. Stuart and Bernie Grusso Jr., who especially was terrific, I thought, in the opening round. What do we expect from these two? Yeah, well, it, it really is um, a tale of, of two stories here, isn't it? I mean, Warren, very traditional, um, obviously a, a, an older player, um, but one of Australia's greatest all-time players has the resume to back that up. But he'll, you'll see him play a lot straighter, uh, a lot more direct up the lane and probably you know, keep himself out of trouble where, you know, Bernie has the potential to strike a lot, but also with that big hook um, can leave himself some pretty interesting leaves. So um, I'm actually predicting that uh, it's going to be a fifth frame nail biter for me. I, I kind of feel like it's going to come down to someone needing a strike or a mark to, to win this one out. Certainly will be, a, 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 I, I believe, too, a fifth frame uh, nail biter here. And um, I know Warren will not be laying down and Bernie will not be letting Warren take it easy either. Here we go. Just moments away here from the second round. Warren Stewart and Bernie Garusso Jr. Here at CPL3 Melbourne. The decider. Double points. Championship up for the grabs for some of these athletes. So Warren stepping up to take the first shot. He'll lead the way. Warren Stewart on the approach stalwart of the sport Stewart egged on by the pit and it falls over there's a strike for Stewart continues with the perfect start here in the TV finals. I, I tell you what, it's uh, everyone, every ball's been a strike. Bernie no pressure on Bernie stepping up here to do the same. Yes, looking to continue that trend. As you mentioned, Mike. Russo Jr. Star of the first round. Knows how to fire up the pit as well, this man. But the 10-pin remains up. That friendly 10-pin stood its way. It's there to be spared again. Once again, should be an easy spare for Bernie. Yeah, it just looked like the ball roll on that one. It got a little forward on Bernie. It didn't quite create the angle of entry to the pins to see the 6-pin carry the 10. But hopefully executes a good spare conversion, which he does. Uh, and I would, I would imagine that the next time he's on that lane in particular, we're going to see a little bit more angle from the ball. He's going to get his hand around it a little more and, and make sure the six pin does its job. Great to have Jason Belmonte with us here today in the box for the next few games. Russo Jr. with a spare in the opening frame. Now on his second roll. Russo Jr. Two hands. Goes Brooklyn. Last one falls. Yes, he crossed to the left-hand side of the head pin there. Called Brooklyn strike. It carried 10. It mixed them well, but it's not probably what the bowlers are actually aiming for. So that's more like it for Russo Jr. The six pin, the last one to fall there. Now Stewart. Strike in the first frame. Super 8, semi-final. Stewart looks good. and He's going to have to bowl again to close the frame. Yeah, mate, just a little a little, a little too right down lane. Uh, and that's one of the disadvantages of Warren's style and game today is that it has a lot less rotation, a lot less uh, ability to curve and cover the board. So when he misses his target a little further to the right, um, you know, he has the potential to leave that two pin or, or worse. One to work with for Stewart. Easy does it. So both bowlers have started off with a strike and a spear, but Warren strike first, then spear, and Bernie spear, then strike. Just one thing to note that, um, as Jason's been saying about the differences between the two shots, Warren bowls with a thumb in the ball, and Bernie bowls with no thumb in the ball, being the two-handed style. 
Yeah, what is this two-handed thing about? Yeah, I, I have no idea. Maybe someone here might know. <laughs> so, Stuart. Looking to continue his terrific TPL3 so far in the third frame. There's a strike for Stuart. Hits up. And it is back to back. Yeah, I can't help but smile when Warren's bowling. Like, he's such a good guy. He's such a good guy. He's been so great for Australian bowling for so long. And to see him back under the TV lights, uh, you know, bowling against the next gen uh, in Burnie, it's, it really is a thrill. Certainly is. What an opportunity for this man, Bernie Caruso Jr. Bit of power behind that one, and he's got a tough split. Certainly is a tough split, 4 7 10. Um, so, this one here, what he's going to have to do is uh, it is spareable, it's very difficult. He needs to be to the left hand side of the two pins on the left and kick the four pin, which is the front one, across onto the 10. Let's see if he can execute. Garuso Jr. Oh, good effort. He gave a very good chance here. Yeah, he just missed it. If he had just clipped, if he had just clipped the um, pin there, it would have slid across into the ten pin. Well, and and that's one of the disadvantages of having such a high rev rate. Is he looked to create a little bit more angle to get that ten pin out, but the ball overhooked, left himself a nasty split. So, just having a little extra power doesn't always work in your favour. Now he's playing catch up somewhat. Garuso Jr. There's a strike. He Went over up. easily. So unfortunately, he's a little bit behind the eight ball here with the uh, open frame, but the strike is exactly what he needed to do to sort of keep in touch with Warren and hope that there's a chance of him coming back here with a double. Uh, look, I'm putting my money on Warren right now to go 10 back. <laughs> All of that experience is going to come out on this shot right here. He threw it a little to the right the last time, left himself the two pin. I would expect at least a pocket shot. From Mr. Stewart. Much loved figure here of 10 pin bowling in Australia. Now on the bright lights of TV here in the Super 8. Stewart on the roll. The 10 stands. Our friendly 10 pin has come, come to show itself again. Well, he did hit the pocket, and that was the first job. You've got to get to the 1 3, give yourself a chance. He did that, but the ball just went a little bit too long, didn't quite create that angle. Uh, but still, in the driver's seat, makes the spare here, and then he has an opportunity to shut out Bernie in the final frame. Stewart looking to close the frame. Does just that. Strike, spare, strike, spare is the scorecard for Stewart. And what? Yeah, Warren showing that he um, uh, how good he is at picking up those ten pin spares and and uh, making sure he has a clean frame. Now, if my math isn't wrong, which I would hope in bowling I get this right, but uh, Warren will need a double seven to lock out Bernie to win the match. Because Bernie's got the strike in the fourth frame, which potentially could be. Um, Bonus. Well, anything less than a double seven, mm. and Bernie can either tie or win the match. We'll see if he can do just that here. Stewart approaches. There's a strike. Big roar from the pit. A lot of support for this veteran of the sport. Oh, absolutely clutch. And the, and the release on that ball was perfect. It rolled right where it needed to to give it that angle of entry to send the 10 pins back into the deck. Uh, Warren now needs to repeat that exact same shot. And he's on his favourite lane here. So this right-hand lane, he's actually struck every ball so far. So it's the one he likes. Stewart to put it out of reach. Finds the position. A crucial role for a man so familiar with the big stage. Stewart. One more up. Four pin stands. Was a pin was rolling around there. We thought something might have happened, but not quite. 
No, well, he's definitely still made Bernie step up. Bernie's going to have to do a little work in the 10th frame to take the, the win against Warren. Warren will... Well, it doesn't really matter what he does right here, but he'll make the spare, I'm sure. Takes care of business. That'll do it for the semi-final for Stewart. And that leaves 100 as a score for Warren, so it's all in Bernie's court here. He needs to step up. He's got a chance to actually take this game, but he needs a strike on the first ball. Garusso Jr. with the fifth frame to come. Has the strike in the fourth, crucially. On the approach. It's exciting youngster. Russo Jr. Another strike. Double for him. Still a little bit more work for Bernie. Needs to get this next one. He needs it. And then give himself some good count to move on to the next round. Bernie there. Uh, sorry, Mikey. Thank Bernie, you, right, mate. after that big split uh, from the previous shot on that lane, he's jumped in another couple of boards further left. He's caught a little bit more oil, and you can just see how that board just floated down the lane a little further before it started to make its way back to the pocket. Great adjustment from someone so young. Just goes to show you the talent pool in here in Oz is deep. It is indeed. And his opportunity today here in the Super 8. Powerful athlete. Needs another one. Won't get it. Just one remains there. You know, and sometimes when you do see those big splits through the nose, it just stays in the back of your mind a little bit. And I wonder if Bernie was thinking, you know, don't miss it left, don't miss it left, or you could leave another split. And he's just overcompensated, throwing a little bit too hard now to the right, which will hand Warren the victory. One five, one. five pins short, so yes, 100 to 95. And it was all down to that last shot, the second, front, uh, second shot in the, tenth, uh, the fifth frame. So we'll have... Warren's it's hard not to say 10th frame, isn't it? It is. Uh, <laughs> I, it, it, it's ingrained, I tell you what. Yeah, the last frame in 10 pin bowling is the 10th frame. And when we talk about doubles and turkeys in the 10th, yeah. It certainly is. We've got Candy Hertz with Warren Stewart right now. Warren, or as your fans call you, Wazza, of course, being at your home court here, home, home centre today. How exceptional is it for you to be able to have this amazing group behind you, but also have an advantage of knowing how they work? Well, I'm not sure I've got that advantage of how they work, but uh, clearly from those couple of last shots I bowled. But no, look, uh, it, the crowd is unbelievable. Uh, it's the best one I've seen. And uh, to have the local, uh, the locals here, but more than locals, you know, it's, it's just awesome to uh, have everyone here and supporting the, uh, the TPL. Now, I know you're also a big supporter of the Young Guns. We've got some amazing rising stars in this Super 8. How proud of you watching them perform? proud. I mean, they are unbelievable. You know, uh, I'm in the last part of the uh, my bowling and these young kids are just starting off and they are just awesome to watch and uh, yeah, just incredible. You can watch them all day. Warren or Waza, congratulations and looking forward to seeing you in the next round. Thanks, Candy. Thank you very much. Thanks, Candy. Great to hear from Warren Stewart, who advances to the final four. He's one of the stories here of TPL3. Stick around, of course, the second semi-final of the second round. Coming up in just a moment here at Keon Park. We'll be back very, very shortly. Welcome back to Keelan Park here in Melbourne, of course, not far from the beautiful Mornington Peninsula here in Victoria. As we approach summer, it is truly one of the great destinations here if you are in Victoria. Fantastic wineries, great beaches, 
relaxing place to visit. Discover cool climate Pinot Noir if that is your jam as well. The Mornington Peninsula Boys, one of the places to go. Mornington uh, Peninsula is a great place. I have just uh, went down there just a couple of months back where, with a family gathering and it was a fantastic stay down in uh, Mornington itself. So, yeah. We've all had some great experiences down there if you're a Victorian. Of course, back at Keon Park, we are moments away from the second semi-final after Warren Stewart prevailed in the previous. He is through to the preliminary final. And, of course, we've got Jason Belmonte here in the commentary box as well for the coming matchup between Blake Walsh and Sam Cooley. This is going to be good, boys. Going to be awesome, yeah. So uh, we've got Blake who's coming in with a uh, great form and uh, his personality to boot. So uh, we've got Sam Cooley who's just got pedigree oozing and uh, he's just yeah, one of our best players sort of over in, 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 the, in America, bowling on the pro circuit. So it's going to be a great match. And Jason, a bit of a World Cup flavour from the Australian team here. Yeah, and no shortage of power either. These two boys both put in a lot of revolutions on the bowling ball and throw it nice and firm. So we're going to see the pins bounce around a lot. Uh, you know, Blake obviously uh, has a lot of uh, Australian representation through his family. Uh, both his parents, Emma and Cameron, are Australian representatives. His uncle Jason, also an Australian representative. And to see Blake don the Australian colours too... Um, it must be a really proud feeling for the entire Walsh family. Sam, Sam has, when I tell you that the player that Sam is today compared to where he was a couple of years ago is light and day different. Night and day, sorry. Um, he has improved immensely in all areas of his game. In particular, moments like these, those clutch moments. You know, on tour... We look at Sam now when there's a shot to be made. He is someone that we have pretty, pretty much a lot of confidence in. He will make that shot. After losing that first round, knowing that it's do or die for him now, uh, I think we're going to see the best shots of Sam all day long. So it's going to be an absolute barn burner. 100% correct there, Jason. Yeah, and uh, you just see his composure too. He's just on the lanes. He's focused as he knows exactly what he's going to do, exactly what he set out to do, and more often than not, he's doing that now. Please make sure Here we go. Cooley and Walsh. Just a matter of moments away. One spot remains in the final four here of the Sunday Super 8 here at Keon Park. And one of these gentlemen will qualify with a victory here. And will it be a two-thumbs-up moment for Blake Walsh? He'll be hoping so. Sam Cooley looking to put an end to that party. I feel like if Blake does win and he gives a two-thumbs-up, someone needs to make a meme picture out of that. <laughs> <laughs> that can be organised, I reckon. Let's see if it happens. So Sam Cooley. There's the roll. Looks very good for the opener. One strike down. Great shot, opening up, strike for Sam. Blake steps up, knowing he has to do exactly the same. Plenty of support in the pit for this man, as we saw in the opening round. Blake Walsh on the approach. Two hands, hits the pocket, a lot of power, and his opening strike goes. And Blake, Blake says, I can do it too, Sam. Have a look at that. Yeah, quite, quite contrasting angles they're playing too. Sam has moved a little further left, opened up the lane a little bit to create a little bit more hook, but he's getting his ball to roll a little sooner, where Blake has decided to go with his A game. A little bit more speed, a little bit more direct, and trying to really throw those pins around. So Walsh again. Wants the double to open here in the semi. And one pin will remain standing. <laughs> right smile from the youngster. Whoa. <laughs> the crowd's just gone, gone wild, the five pin. Well, so you'll see everybody their with their hands up, in, the, in the background, and that's because if your hand is raised and he misses this spare... He owes you a drink at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> the five pin, the easiest spare in the game. So or that's what should why be. Should be. <laughs> we raise our hands. A lot of candidates as well in the crowd. 
And he gets it. Senses the moment, does Blake Walsh. There was no way Blake was going to miss that one. No free drinks this afternoon. Damn. Is he old enough to buy the drinks? I don't know. You have to probably ask mum and dad. <laughs> no, he isn't. No. He's 17. Cooley. Strike in the opening frame. Class from Sam Cooley. Very, very cool, calm, collected. He just goes up there and does what needs to be done. All the um, action from the previous frame and the hand up and so forth did nothing to distract Sam from what he needed to do. You know, and he's made a ball change as well from his previous time that he was on this pair of lanes. And this ball, the altered reality, it allows him to get a little bit more push more before the ball starts to hook. He gets a little further left. It won't hook too early. So it really stores a lot of that energy for the back part of the lane. Ball reaction's looking great right now for Sam. Cooley. Another strike for him. He's got the turkey to start off the semi-final. The way Sam's going now with three strikes, I mean, there's every chance he could punch out and get a perfect 150 game in the five frames. He's on the way. That's for sure. Here's Walsh. A strike and a spare to open. Lake Walsh. And the 10. Again, that pesky 10. Certainly been popping up uh, quite a bit in this uh, this fi these final few matches. Once again, Blake should be able to spare this very easily. Maybe not as easy as the 5 pin, but uh, it is a one of the easy pins on the deck. Yeah, and he's been quite unfortunate. The 5 pin is a shot that you know, 99 out of 100, it falls over for him. And then the 10 pin, there was plenty of pins around that could have knocked it over. Correct. It's a game of inches at times, but he takes care of business there. So this is where, if I'm in Blake's shoes, I take my time, I try to slow the clock down a little bit, I let Sam sit there a little bit longer, make him think about what's going to happen. But the youngster, straight up. No time wasted. Walsh again. He's a man in a hurry, Blake Walsh, and you can see why. Why wait when you're going to throw a shot like that, right? Exactly. When you just look at his demeanour, for a 17-year-old to be in this sort of situation, being under, down, and just look at his face, he's just all there. He's a champ. As is this man, who's had three strikes to start. Sam Cooley. Can he make it a four-bagger? He does. And this is right in Sam's wheelhouse. This is, if, there, if he has an A game, this is it. Playing the middle part of the lane... Can use quite a natural ball speed, get his natural hand rotation around it. Sam is going to be very difficult to beat so long as this ball motion for him stays consistent. The fifth frame, moments away. He was the one seed coming into the Super 8 and now the chance to play the other one in Cameron Stein in the prelim. If he can take care of business. Cooley looking for five. <laughs> it got there. Nudged over was the ten. That friendly ten pin didn't want to go, but uh, Sam's got a way of making it walk off the lane. He certainly does. So five running. For oh, and Cooley. the crowd's given Sam a bunch of cheek for beating up for beating up a youngster mm. with that messenger shot. <laughs> but that's exactly is. what Sam. Yeah. Is, uh, is doing these days, these, these clutch games. He comes out and just fires absolutely perfect shots, and he's very difficult to beat. Cooley. Clutch again. So one to come for Sam Cooley. Can he make it the perfect game? Perfect 150 coming up here, I say. 
Every shot's been just so solid. And how else to make a 17-year-old feel the pain? Would be our first perfect game of this afternoon's Super 8. If you can convert. Cooley looking for seven. Does just that. Cooley the perfect game. 150 here in the sprint format. Congratulates Walsh. What a performance. Walsh with a frame to come. Perfect 150. He cannot beat that. Blake could have only tied. So he's got nothing to lose here. Walsh can hold his head high. Let's give us a two thumb there, two two thumbs up moment. I was just going to say. Look, it's moments like these two boys where you're young to experience this, to get this experience under his belt now. It's going to be a little scary to see when Blake turns mid twenties. He's had years of experience bowling TPL TV shows and events around the world. This is an this is an environment that. Players in my generation, we never really got this opportunity like this. So whilst he's going to walk off the lanes, not the winner today, this is going to incredibly help his career. So the seven is the final equation for Walsh here of the Super 8. A man with all the potential at just 17, finishes in style, salutes the pit, coolly prevails here with a perfect game of 150, and he will go through to the prelim, boys. Certainly did. I mean, in 108, he, it was a fully closed game. There was nothing more he could uh, nothing more he could do in there apart from getting strikes, and even if he had got all strikes, it would have only tied with Sam. Candy Hertz is with Sam Cooley right now, the victor today. Sam, the first perfect match. Congratulations to you. What's key to focus on in a league like this? I don't think the mindset changes. Despite it being half a game, you still have to get up, execute, and do the best you can at all times. Now, amazing against your opponent today, who, of course, was not only charismatic, but very talented as well, a rising star. How great is it to see the future looking so bright? It's, it's looking really good for Australian bowling. Blake, along with a lot of other guys, are involved with the TPL and all the events that we have. We've got a bright future going through, and the rest of the world needs to be, just be very scared. Now, there's something that we saw in the matchup now that we haven't seen before is a bit of healthy heckling happening going on. Jared behind you was trying to say to you that you might break the camera if you smile. Would you like to show him a response to that? He's one to talk. <laughs> Are we going to get a smile out of you? Maybe, yeah. There we go. Congratulations, Sam, through to the next round. Sam Cooley, ladies and gentlemen, got the smile out of him. Fantastic. Jason, thank you very much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Boys, you're doing a great job. I uh, love my time here in the booth. And uh, what a match to watch. A perfect perfect half a game, I suppose. A perfect game. Um, it's going to be an absolute incredible prelim and finals. Uh, I can't wait to grab my chair at the back and, uh, and join the rest of the crowd and cheering for these fellas. Do us proud as well in a couple of weeks in the Australian Colours. Jason Belmonte, ladies and gentlemen, and... We'll go to a quick break at the moment, but stick around the top four just moments away here at the TPL3 Super 8.
now. We're still lucky right now to be joined by the wonderful Grace. Grace didn't make it through to the Super 8 this time, but you have had an exceptional time with TPL. How are you enjoying today from a different perspective? Um, it's actually so great. The environment is insane. Like, it's really good vibes, so we're very happy. And who have you enjoyed most watching today? Warren Stewart. He is he's such a great ambassador for the game and I don't think there's a person in this room that's not going for him. So. Now, of course, we do know that TPL3 is one title that's being uh, taken out today, but also the entire championship title. Who do you think's got a chance? Honestly, I have no idea. Like, the top three in the rankings at the moment didn't make it. So probably Sam, I think, is sitting the highest out of the ones left, so... And, of course, with the league in total, you've been to all three. It's been fantastic having you there. Different crowds, different environments. How have you enjoyed it in total? Oh, it's just great. Like, this is a very good publicity sort of thing for the sport, so it's great. Well, congratulations to you and all your success so far. It's fun watching you have a bit of fun here with the rest of your, your teammates, of course. Well done to all of them too, and we'll see what's going to happen with the rest of today. Grace Bay, who was a star through TPL 1 and 2, of course, not here in the Super 8 today. What a star she is, and still, uh, you know, she yep. was in the running coming she, into this. She sense. certainly was. I mean, yep. Grace Faye's done so f such fantastic stuff this year, not just in the TPL, but outside as well, and uh, she's got a great future ahead of her. Unfortunately, she was eliminated in round one, this this one here, and missed out to the proceeding, but she has been up there and was runner-up in the first one up in Wodonga as well. So, uh, so she was up there. Unfortunately, this event wasn't her day. So the final four is as follows. Cameron Stein plays Sam Cooley and Jamie Robinson will play Warren Stewart for a chance to make the Super 8 final here. Of course, yes, TPL 3 is at stake, but also the TPL 10-pin Premier League Championship and Sam Cooley still in the running. It's certainly down to the wire and Sam is where he needs to be. If he wasn't at this stage of the round, he would be out of the contention. So he certainly is up there and he's looking good to go through. We've also got Jamie Robinson, who potentially in the next next match, if he goes through to the final with Sam Cooley, could have a chance with the double points and everything. So it's still certainly open here at the end. It is. I mean, what, what a moment that would be if it was Cooley and Robinson in the final playing for not only TPL3, but the championship in, in all. And and, I suppose, and then Jared could be sitting there hoping for a Stein and Stewart grand final. So yes. we just never know what could happen sort of leading up here. But certainly Sam Cooley um, is still in the box seat. And he's coming in here in hot form after the 150. And it was also, yeah, great having Jason Belmonte, our number one bowler in the world, sort of uh, co-commentating here and watching that 150 game. And But uh, coming into this with great form, He's on the same pair of lanes. He's nice and fresh coming in. So Cameron's going to have to step up his game here in the first match in order to uh, take down Sam. It could go down to the wire here at TPL3. Of course, Cameron Stein as well. He was, he was great in that first qualifying final. One of the youngsters here. Really, we've got uh, two veterans of the sport here in the final four. We've got Cooley and Stewart and then two up-and-comers in Robinson and Stein. That's how it played out. It's well, a good storyline. We have the two youth, as in bowlers that they have actually done well this year. They've got the bronze medal at the World Championships early this year in Sweden. And so they're coming in with top form. We've got Sam Cooley, who's had, as Jason has said, a much improved couple of years. And just this year has been fantastic for Sam and coming back with a gold medal from the, um, uh, the World Games. And then we've got... As, as we say, the crowd favourite, the Warren Stewart, who's been there, done that. He is a legend in um, Tempin Bowling. Back in the late 80s and the 90s, he's been out there. He's done it all. But in a totally different time, a different era, when there wasn't the two-handed bowling around the world that there is today. And most of the matches we have pretty much had a two-hander versus a one-hander and uh, the thumb-in, thumb-out scenario sort of playing, the high-rev, low-rev scenario. So, I mean, we've had a certain, certainly a mix of um, uh, styles and players that have been coming up here, young and old, plus bowling styles. We have. That's a great point. It's a matchup of styles, a matchup of experience. And Cooley and Stein, the opening prelim final. No rest for this man who prevailed just moments ago in the semi. So 
Sam Cooley. Opening frame. Strike to start it off. Well, that certainly makes it. He had seven strikes in the last game, and this makes number eight without a miss. So he's going along very strong. Very strong indeed. Eight strikes running for Cooley. That's quite the stat. Stein. After resting in the previous round. Doesn't matter. First strike goes for Cameron Stein. Cameron Stein continues his clean start. As we said, uh, they've all started off with strikes in the first ball. Start out of the blocks very fast. Leaving nothing to chance. They have indeed. To make it a double. One of the stars of the future. As Cooley outlined before. Stein. Two straight. Another strike for Stein. Cameron comes from the uh, the Queensland area, from the Toowoomba area, if I'm correct there. And so he's sort of certainly come down south and dominating. He sure is dominating. What a TPL3 it's been so far for him. Cooley. Try to ruin the party. Sam Cooley, the roll. Skittles them again. Perfect start for both these bowlers. This is going to be a close match, and it's going to be... It's, it's They've started off with a double each. Perfect start, two strikes. Going into the third frame. There's a bit of jiving going on between the crowd here. We'll see. Does Skittles. it affect Sam? And you'd think not, would you? For this star of the sport. Cooley, third round, CPL, and another strike, a turkey to start off the prelim final. Possibly not as clean as every other shot you could see from the body language, but uh, Sam will take that and settle the crowd, and that actually makes three strikes there on top of the seven. He's actually had the last ten balls as a strike. What a run of form. Stein wants one back and he gets it. Both of these men are on fire here, Mike. As we go into the end of the third frame, they're perfect games all round and this could be 150 tied. Finish each way. To go to a bowl off. Stein. Two frames remaining in the prelim. Composers. Cameron Stein. Four bagger. Four strikes running. Solid as. That was amazing. For a young one to step up under that sort of pressure and bowl that sort of a shot. Absolutely awesome. So this man approaching what would be a perfect game in the normal format of 10 frames. Yes, well and truly. He's uh, yeah, at, at number 10 at the moment. Cooley, looking for the response. And just, oh, as you would not expect, the 10 will remain standing. At that friendly 10 pin that he shuffled off the deck earlier on in the other game, and this one, it's that stood up there and it's waving at him, so unfortunate. Gee, I thought that was down. Everything, he did everything that should have made it go. That was unfortunate. So breaks the streak of strikes at 10. Looking for the spare and does just that. Takes the cover off it. Never in doubt. Never in doubt. He's done that. And he knows it's unfortunate. He needs the next three strikes to at least keep Cameron clean. And this is where the thoughts will be going through Cameron's mind. Jared Langford watching on. It's 
Sam Cooley. There's the roll. And again, one pin remains. Looks to be the eight. So needs the spare here. It's a four pin standing. He's going for the spare. This, this should be easy, but it's not exactly what Sam needed in order to have a chance of winning this game. Needs to take care of business and does. This has one more ball to finish out the frame. To put the pressure on Cameron Stein. So Cameron's got an advantage. He's coming in off a double, but uh, well, off, off a four bagger, bagger, of course. But the double will boost the score. But he does need to close his frames and a decent finish in order to push Sam to the end. Cooley, right at the pointy end of this tournament. And he gets nine. That finishes his preliminary final. 117. So Stein just has to do his end of the bargain here. Yeah, decent count here. Obviously he'll be going for a strike where he can to match Sam's 150. Stein. And there's five. Cameron Stein with a five-bagger. So the end, yeah, the, the result is determined here. There's nothing more, but he's going for that sec uh, the uh, second perfect 150 game back-to-back, -back, if possible, to say, you can do it, Sam, so can I. Cooley with the last perfect game here in the Super 8. And Stein do the same. There's another one. One more to come after six straight. And second game in a row, we have somebody standing up to bowl a perfect 150 game in the televised round. Cameron Stein. Been quite the performance from this young man. And all oh, so close to One. capping it off with a perfect game. But what a performance from Stein, who will go ahead with a score of 149 into the Super 8 showdown here at TPL 3. 149, brilliant score by anyone. But again, Sam Cooley to progress into the final of the TPL 3. Absolutely amazing by Cameron. There really is. We'll have... Candy Hurts with Stein, the youngster, into the final. Here he is. Cam, one pin off that perfect game, but an amazing game, of course, to knock off the legend, Sam Cooley. How proud are you right now? Oh, I'm very happy. I knew that Sam was going to give me a really hard time. I was like, I just need to focus on myself and just make the best shots I can, and hopefully it's enough to get across the line. Amazing. We've been talking a lot with you today about calming the nerves and getting ready for what's next. Of course, now going into the grand final, what's your plan mentally and physically? Uh, the same thing as I've been doing this whole time is just um, control what I can control, focus on the process and just enjoy it. Well, we hope you do enjoy it. Cam, congratulations straight through to the grand final. Thank you, Candy. Some stoic words from Cameron Stein, who has one match remaining here to take out TPL3. Stick around. Second prelim coming up in just a few moments. Robinson and Warren Stewart. Stick around.
Welcome back to Victoria for TPL3. And if you are in the vicinity, make sure you check out the Murray River, of course. Having a bit of a tricky time at the moment with what we know is going on with the weather. So if you can get up there over the summer, put some money back into the area because it is a beautiful place to be and a great summer holiday destination. It is a lovely area. I mean, all of the Murray River areas are fantastic up there. And I know that they're in flood at the moment and it's probably not the area that you need to go. But as, as you said... Um, yeah, get there over the summer break and get some money back into that uh, the communities up there. I'm sure it's going to be absolutely pristine come December and January. Here we are back at Keon Park. Just two matches remaining here. The prelim moments away, Jamie Robinson and Warren Stewart. And, of course, it is all to play out for Jamie Robinson. The winner of today, if it is Robinson, can go on to win the championship. The only player who is left in the running, other than Langford, who, of course, is in the lead. With Sam Cooley losing that last match, he's no longer able to win the event, which he needed to do in order to take off Jared from the top spot. Jamie Robinson, on the other hand, is still live. Now, if he wins this and goes through and goes and wins the title match, then he's a chance of taking Jared's top position. Otherwise, Jared looks like he's got the win. How exciting. We've got Robinson, the youngster, in the running for the big chip. Meanwhile, Warren Stewart, veteran, crowd favourite, stalwart of the sport, chance to go into the final against Cameron Stein if he is victorious. Well and truly, never underestimate Warren because he's been around there a long time and he knows he knows the ropes, basically. And he's had wins, he's had titles internationally and so forth where he knows what to do. Jamie, on the other hand, is one of our younger bowlers. Yes, he went over to the World Championships and got a bronze medal uh, with the youth team there. But obviously, being a younger player, he hasn't experienced this sort of pressure, whereas Warren probably has. So yes, Warren is the crowd favourite. He's going in there and um, he's very popular and stuff, but anything can happen. Our youth players have been showing how wonderful they are in this event so far. So the youth is also not to be underestimated. It's got to be one of the real positives of the 10 pin Premier League is creating opportunities under the bright lights for these young athletes to experience that pressure. Well and truly and I mean Jason brought that up earlier on Jason Belmonte made a comment when he was young he never had this opportunity to as a youngster to bowl under lights and and to be um, sort of this sort of an event and for the, our young players our junior and our youth players to have this opportunity um, leading into the future it's absolutely brilliant. It's an opportunity you cannot cannot miss. Stylistically, in this prelim final, what are we expecting from these two athletes? Well, they're both um, single-hand or thumb-in players. Um, so we've got Jamie Robinson does um, rev the ball or have a few more revs than, say, Warren would have. As um, Jason was saying, Warren's more of an... Uh, uh, not, we'll say an old style, a style bowler, which is the, tr the traditional sort of down and in sort of shot. But they're both, um, yeah, it's going to be very interesting to watch. Slightly different than what we've seen in the last um, last couple of matches with some of the high rev two-handed style players. We heard from Grace Fay moments ago as well. She was excited to see this man in action. First roll of the prelim. Warren Stewart. It looks good. It looks very good. Warren says, I'm here to play. Welcome to the big boys. That was crisp from the veteran. And Jamie, Jamie sets up. He's obviously getting his mind in order. The last player live for TPL. Can he take out Jared Langford? Here's the start he needs, and he gets it. Opening a strike for Robinson. Quite a confident there. He, he wasn't 100% sure what was happening there, but um, it was a great strike. Seemed to be his demeanour in the first game as well. Yes. Yeah, he's a very laid-back, casual sort of player there. Robinson looking for the double. Looks composed. Make it two. Count it. Solid ball. He liked that one. Great shot. 
Great so shot. out of the blocks with a double for Jamie. Once again, the youth players step up there and they know what they're doing from ball one. They're out of the blocks very quickly. All of these athletes have been out of the blocks straight away, as you mentioned, Mike. Mm. In the sprint format of TPL, so crucial. Stewart on the approach. Senses the moment and gets what he needs. The seven goes down with a nudge. And we're getting a little bit of animation there from Warren Stewart, which is great to see. Some signs of the past. You can hear the pit is right behind this man. And back in back in the days when Warren was uh, a star, they used to ride their shots quite a bit, meaning moving left and right as the ball's entering the pocket. That was almost a ride. What a thrill to see this man in action. Warren Stewart. Searching for the turkey. He finds it. Three in a row. Mark it down. He salutes the pit. Warren has certainly come here to play. Got three strikes on the board. Turkey to start off the game. Puts the pressure back onto Jamie now, who's coming off a double. Enjoying every moment of this, isn't he? Warren Stewart. Now it's up to Robinson. Looking for the response. Mark down three as well for this man. What a start to the prelim. What what a match, what a finals ma series we've had. I mean, we opened up with three strikes each, going into the fourth frame. Both of them still potentially 150 perfect game. Jamie Robinson. Perfect game. Still up for grabs. Chance to make it a full bagger. You and bet. Does. So Great. now Warren will have to return fire. Voluntarily. Each time now, I mean, they're, they're neck and neck, so whatever one does, the other has to do, or else they're behind. And at this late stage, they won't be able to come back. Robinson's just going over things. Jamie says, I've given you a strike. Warren has to get one. These two athletes going back and forth. Stewart on the roll. It's egged on and the 10 remains up. That lovely 10 pin that's been popping up for Warren quite a few times. Pops up again right when he doesn't need it. Of course, Warren will spare this. But it puts him way behind Jamie. All down to what Jamie does next frame. At the pointy end now. Stewart does as you'd expect, but by the barest of margins. Just well and truly. It almost looked like it fell off the lane. I'm just looking. Yeah, no, actually, that's a dead. That would be a dead ball. I, I, well, from looking at it from this angle, that would have to be corrected as a miss. Great eye there, Mike. So now we go into the fifth frame after the minor blemish. Needs a run of strikes, you'd suspect. Keeps himself right in the mix. Gives himself that strike. Everything he has to do is he has to get the three strikes here and rely on Jamie to have an open frame. But um, 
obviously, uh, James is in good form with four strikes. Looking into the fifth. for the two more. Warren Stewart, star of the show here at TPL3. Finding his spot. Needs another. And the split. Yeah, well and truly a split. And that's not a nice one there. And Warren knows that uh, his game is over. His run is over. Wastes no time. What will he make of this? Takes, takes out two. Pit. So salutes the pit. 106, the final score for Stewart. Robinson with a run of four strikes. Can he make it five? And once again, Jamie's on a chance here for a perfect 150 game to match Sam's. Ooh, with a 10, remain standing. That'll put the perfect game out of reach. Certainly. I mean, it, once again, he should be able to pick this spare up, but it was a decent shot. Once again, the 10 pin stood. So Jamie Robertson. And it might have again gone in the I'm gutter. I'm just looking at that too. I think that, uh, yeah, that was a nine miss. Nonetheless, though, Jamie Robinson still alive for the he championship. Is still alive. <laughs> Once again, a bit of a slightly an anti-climax there in the final frames with the uh, pins and so forth. But um, 117 to 106 means Jamie goes through. So we wait for mm. confirmation. Yep. And that'll do it, it seems. Yep. So it is an 11 pin margin in the end. Jamie Robinson goes forward into the Super 8 showdown. And he is live for not only TPL3, but the 10-pin Premier League Championship as a whole. Warren Stewart salutes the pit. And we'll have Candy Hertz with Jamie right now. Jamie, congratulations, making it right through to the grand final against a veteran of the sport and much loved Warren. How incredible is it performing against people like this today? Oh, I mean, it's great. It's not every day that you get to go out and bowl against people like this at uh, such high level, so it's great. And going, of course, into that grand final, what's going to change for you or are you going to stick to the same game? Uh, hopefully I can spare 10 pins. Now, I'm not sure if you're aware of this as well, but not only now are you vying for the TPL3 title, but you are also still a contender in there for the overall championship title. Does that add a bit more fuel to the fire? Uh, adds a little bit more pressure, but it's something I don't really want to think about at the moment and just take it as it comes, basically. We'll stop talking about it. We'll let you get ready for your grand final. Congratulations once again to Jamie. All business is Jamie Robinson as he is set to take on Cameron Stein in the Super 8 showdown. Stick around, the big matchup coming up very, very shortly after this quick break. Welcome back to Melbourne here for TPL3. And we all know that Melbourne really is the cultural hub of Australia and the home of the performing arts in Melbourne. There's 
So many great shows on offer around the city every single weekend, every night of the week, really, Mike. You can support yourself, silly. You really can. There's so many um, different th theatres and performances you can go to on a nightly basis. You can, yeah, do something every night. So here we go. The decider, just moments away. The Super 8 showdown. Cameron Stein and Jamie Robinson. Of course, the winner of TPL3 up for grabs, but for Jamie Robinson, a chance at the championship. Jared Langford, as we know, currently sits in the lead. He'll be there. Well, he'll be it's hoping. It's going to be a nervous, nervous fine game. It is the decider. We've got uh, two of our youth bowlers, two, two of the youngsters going through, which is very great to see in the sport of Tempin bowling here in Australia. Cameron Stein and Jamie Robinson, both teammates, uh, when they went to Sweden earlier this year and came back with a bronze medal in the World Championships. So they know each other's games. They've played with each other. They're teammates. They're part of Team Australia. But then as we go into this match here, they're both vying for one, number one, the TPL3 title, but number two, for in Jamie's case, the overall the deciding champion. You can see the two teammates exchanging pleasantries. Good mates as well, away from the lanes. But for the next 10 minutes or so, they will be foes. And, and you'll be interested to know, like from the interview just earlier on, that Jamie's focus, what's he going to do different this game? He's hopefully going to be able to spare a 10 pin. Well, the chances are, the way these boys have been going, Cameron Stein came off, came off a 149. He didn't need to even spare that. And you know, Jamie was going so well also. So we could possibly see another 150 perfect game here, like the one that Sam Cooley bowled just a few games back. I mean, how does that play into the mindset here for Jamie? Is, he, is it easy to kind of get these things out of your head and just, just take it as it comes? What do you think, Mike? Um, pressure affects different people in different ways, and I suppose maturity does help you encounter some of those elements of pressure and so forth. Some, some players just have it there. with their cool, calm, collected. Nothing bothers them. Others would be distracted by the slightest thought, the, the slightest happening sort of around them. Like in that case there, Cam, um, Jamie did seem like he was coming into this with a bit of nerves, but trying to just forget about it all. Um, you have a look at his, he's got a bit of a quieter nature. Not as... Um, bold and outgoing as some of our other athletes that we've had and sort of playing for the crowd. Some some of the other athletes would feed off the crowd and feed off the vibe and that would actually make them bowl better. Others, it's a distraction. So, yeah, it's hard to say with each individual player. It's one of the beauties, really, of TPL. Not only do you get to see the greats in the sport, you get to see the next generation, the stars of Australian bowling. And here we go. It is the decider, just moments away. The Super 8 Showdown. Cameron Stein and Jamie Robinson with it all to play for. Stein with the first roll. Both lads have had terrific tournaments so far. All down to this match. Cameron Stein. Looking for the perfect... First roll, does just that. Open it for Stein with the strike. The perfect start, Sam, um, and Cameron. Yeah, I just uh, he, he just every shot he started off the game with a strike. Now Robertson, hoping to return fire. Robinson, picture perfect. The 10 fell. Interesting. It fell in a very interesting way. It sort of danced across the deck there, but it came down, which is awesome to see. So once again, a perfect opening for every player so far today in the Super 8. Robinson again. He's all composure, this man. And the 10. We spoke too soon about lovely Mr. 10. Now this is where um, Jamie gets to rectify himself. He um, missed the, the spear last time. He's going for a 10 pin spear here. But this one is crucial. Looking to make light work of this. Just missing. 
to the left of the tent. Centimeters Not exactly it. what he was planning there, and I thought he was trying to rectify his last uh, mishap there. But that um, leaves an open and leaves Cameron in the box seat. You could see on the replay it nudged it as well on the way yes. through, just not quite so enough. Close. So Stein. Can he take advantage of this ascendancy? He can. Stein with the double to start off the decider. Cameron just looks at Jamie and says, this is how you do it, Jamie. So can he make it a turkey? To open proceedings here in the main event. Predicting this because uh, yeah, he's come off a 149 game in his last game. Yeah. So close. In some form. Stein. Mark it down. That's three on the trot for Cameron Stein. He seems to do it so easy. He just steps up there and they're gone. He's having a great tournament, great, great event, great few games. Now Robinson. On the comeback trail. Rolls and there's the strike. So back on track is Robinson. Yeah, back on track. Unfortunately, he's got a lot of road to make up. Um, it's certainly not over just yet. It depends on what Cameron does in the next couple of shots, but he just needs to strike out from here for Jamie. Knowing it's the decider, and he needs every pin in order to be there. All the place goes to Jared. Robinson. Plenty of pressure on this shot. Doesn't worry him. Robinson, back-to-back -back strikes. Remains in the hunt. Certainly, he's, he's in there. He would be regretting that nine miss, unfortunately, but there's nothing he can do about it. He just needs to punch out from here and make every pin he can get. The turkey to start us off from Stein. To make it four. And he does that. He makes it four in a row. The four bagger for Stein. Dominant he position. He barely even raises a sweat. I tell you what, he just steps steps up there, bowls a great shot, gets a strike. He's been good today after, as you mentioned, Mike, 149 the last round. Certainly. And he'll be go looking at going one pin more for this one. With one frame to go. Stein, fifth frame, fifth strike, it goes down, pressure release. What better to take out the title of the TPL3 than with a perfect 150 game, and he's everywhere, he's just about there, he needs two more strikes, he's got it. What a moment it would be, there's Langford on the screen now. Stein. Senses the moment. Gets another one. So the perfect game is in play. So With second second time in a row, he's got the front six strikes going for a perfect game of 150. He can sense it. He can see. How good would he like to walk away with a title and a 150 game? How good would it feel? Cameron Stein with the pit behind him. One to come for the perfect game. He does just that. 150. Perfect game in this sprint format. And Cameron Stein will be the TPL3 victor here at Keon Park. What a performance from the youngster. Great effort by the youngster. So Robinson now will start his approach. Strike for him. Another man who can absolutely hold his head high. Well and truly. I mean, the nine miss, it was a great ball to leave that whole 10 pin. Missing the 10 pin was unfortunate, but every other ball has been slam bang in the pocket. 
Robert. pressure's off, it should be a whole lot easier for him to step up here and just roll what he needs to do. On the back of the turkey, making it all the way to the decider. Robinson, count another, so one to come. Bit of chatter from the pit. The pressure's come yeah, off. Here we go. Look. He's being asked to ride ride the shot, which is what I was saying. We'll see what Jamie comes out with. What sort of animation can Jamie provide? He's announced himself on the big stage. Jamie Robinson with the support of the crowd and finishes it off. With another strike, that's a five-bagger, but Cameron Stein will be the TPL3 champion, and that will mean Jared Langford secures the 10-pin Premier Jared League championship. Jared has taken out the championship, which is an awesome performance there by both players, while well, Cameron Stein winning TPL3, and then that means that neither of the contenders came up to take Jared off his top spot, and he takes out the 10-pin Premier League championship. Of course. We've got the presentations about to begin now. And we'll see both players up there collecting their respective trophies. Got the Honourable Bronwyn Halfpenny as well. Local member for Thomastown here to present the trophy to Cameron Stein. Please make very welcome. It is your winner of the TPL3 Decider. Congratulations to Cameron. Come and join us up here. We do have the incredible Victorian Government local member of Thomas Town, Bronwyn Halfpenny, to give you that award. Congratulations. How excited are you feeling right now? I'm over the moon right now. I'm so happy. I can't really put it into words. <laughs> you know, we spoke again and again today about the energy, about your nerves, how you feel. You, you must be feeling a great relief right now. I am. It's like a big weight of pressure. I'm like, oh, it's finally... It's over. <laughs> Tell us a bit about leading into today, because obviously you've been part of TPL all the way through. What did you do differently? Did you do extra practice? Did you eat differently? What was different today? I just approached it with a different mindset, really. All I did was just try and enjoy the moment rather than try and put my own like uh, pressure in my head. So I was just trying to enjoy it, really. And we had this incredible crowd behind us today, Cam. How fantastic were they? The crowd's been amazing. It's been absolutely amazing. <laughs> well, congratulations. Put your hands together once more. Our TPL3, the decider winner. Congratulations to Cameron. It is a big moment now because not only were we crowning our TPL3 decider winner today, but we do have Rowan with us, O'Neill, from, from, bas from Basketball Australia, from, from Tempin Bowling Australia, CEO, of course, and an exciting moment for you. You've watched this develop and grow. How happy are you with how it's all turned out? Uh, absolutely wrapped, Candy, and just can't thank everyone uh, enough. The crowd, the people behind the scenes, the athletes particularly, they're the stars and they've been outstanding. So it's been fantastic. Now, Rowan O'Neill, of course, from Tempin Bowling Australia, it is the moment that we are going to be crowning our winner. He is in the room, thank goodness, right now. A big congratulations and welcome up here to Jared Langford. Jared, how are you feeling? What an amazing effort by you, taking it out in just two. Oh, it's an amazing feeling, but sitting back there for the third one, yeah, don't want to do that again. <laughs> It was enjoyable watching you, though. It looked like you were getting a bit nervous there. At what point did you go, ah, oh, I think I've got this? I didn't. <laughs> that last game was two of the best youth bowlers in the country slogging it out. I got lucky. Now, talk to us about the elite level of the athleticism within this sport. It's been incredible to watch from junior all the way through to veterans. What have you enjoyed the most? The competition is one thing, but just the camaraderie between the bowlers... Uh, as you saw, the heckling, that's always a part of bowling. And it just makes these sorts of events just so much fun. And what about the lifting the league's level? Like, I mean, watching everyone come in, being able to perform, have a crowd behind them, have cameras on them as well. How much do you think that's lifted the level? Um, it's definitely lifted the level. It's also put a little bit of pressure on people. So you really get to see the diamonds in the rough. Um, but all... All credit to all the bowlers, everyone that's been a part of the, all the three TPLs. Absolutely. Congratulations to absolutely everyone involved. Jared, all that's left is to turn around and show that crowd your crown. Let's see it. Jared Langford, the winner here at the 10-pin Premier League. So deserving, Mike. The king of the north.
he was king of the north coming in. He won the first two events, and uh, yeah, great, great to see him walk away with the trophy. Certainly is winner of TPL one and two, as you mentioned, and didn't qualify for the Super Eight. Had to sit there. You know, nervously watching on. It must have been torture at times. Relying on others and others to lose, I suppose, in order for him to take that title. He had no control over it whatsoever. And as as he said, he doesn't want to be in that situation again. And I, I, to, to, to tell you the truth, I don't think he ever will. Because, I mean, he'll be wanting it so much that he won't get himself in that situation again. It's a big title, isn't it? The inaugural winner exactly. of the 10-pin Premier League. Yep. Well, Fantastic, yeah. Well, it's it's going to go on in, into next year, bigger and better. And um, a, as to how, how many events there will be, that will be decided later on. But, I mean, these players are, will be looking forward to every opportunity to bowl in TPL going into 2023. His name will be etched in the history books forever now, as will Cameron Stein, the winner of TPL3. What a moment for the youngster. It was the story, really, one of coming into the, the day today here at the Super 8. There were so many youngsters here, and Stein prevails. Correct. We had so many so many of our young ones, sort of right from the beginning, and it was just so great to see them dominate. Um, over there, we had our youngest player, as in Blake Walsh, and our ju a junior. We had so many of our youth players that were there that were dominating, and, and like there were others that actually performed very well in round one that maybe were less less uh, performed less well in round two, but they still stood up there and bowled very well against some of the, the best in the country, and they're only our young juniors and youth and things like that so and then also to have Warren Stewart the the senior the senior in the team sort of uh, come out there and make it all the way through to one of the final matches and just to show that from a young age to an old age Tempin bowling's a sport for everyone it was a great atmosphere here mm. today at Keon Park as you mentioned Warren Stewart the pit were really getting behind every throw that he had he was terrific of course Jamie Robinson made it all the way through as well to the decider the Super 8 showdown had a pretty good afternoon and a great tournament. And the versatility of the shots too. I mean, we had um, the two-handed style, which is uh, obviously uh, Jason Belmonte's um, baby that uh, you sort of, uh, which many of, oh, many of the, oh, is that right? Yeah, many, many of the uh, world has taken on this two-handed style. We have the high rev uh, players, the down the line and players like Warren, the slightly less rev and everything. We have left-handers, right-handers, thumb in, thumb out. So there's so many different styles and techniques that um, are the sport today, and it's so great to see. There's Bowling Australia CEO Rowan O'Neill with Cameron as they present the trophy, and here is Jared Langford, the victor today. What a story. What's been your big takeaway? You've been here, of course, for all three TPLs. First year, first experience. What, what springs to mind? I just love it. It's just the opportunity to have something like this in our sport in Australia is just a first. We've never had anything like this before in the past. Um, it's I know it's early days and it's going to grow from here, but if it can get bigger and better than this, then the bowlers and the athletes in Australia have just got a, a, a fantastic thing ahead of them. These are great pitches, aren't they? Jared Langford, victorious here at Keon Park at Melbourne, the decider. And I suppose the, one of the bigger things too is getting all of our athletes together in one place at one time. And as I think it was Jared that mentioned the comrade, com, comradeship that uh, sort of camaraderie that goes around the athletes, and just getting them together, the support they show, which is what we need to develop. Being such a large place, Australia, we have athletes from all different corners of the country, and it's so expensive and so difficult to get all of the players together in one place at one time. And just to have events like this. That's when you see it. You feel like being in the room today. It was a real... The uh, community of bowling really came out. Well and truly, yeah. And they support each other. I mean, the bottom line is they're all in the same sport. They love the sport. They, uh, they understand the sport. And they support each other because of that. They certainly do. So TPL3, Cameron Stein, the youngster, is the victor here in the decider. And Jared Langford, our inaugural 10-pin Premier League champion. Congratulations to both young men. So many terrific athletes here and a thrill to bring to you the first year of TPL. Looking forward to many successful years to come. Liam Ellison here alongside me, Mike Griffith, the National High Performance Manager. Mike, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Liam. It was a pleasure. It has. It's been an absolute thrill to bring it to you. Thank you very much for joining us. Cameron Stein in TPL3 and Jared Langford, the victor of the championship.